Cool. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. Delighted to have you join us on the show today. Now, I know we had a conversation shortly after the Nollywood actor's demise. It was mm. quite a sad one. And it got the entire nation talking as to how we lost a young man in his prime from something some people perceived it, perhaps it could have been avoided if you had a life jacket and if people knew basic CPR. Yeah. But, I mean, it reinforces the need for us to know some of the basic safety tips. I, I'm a little curious to find out from you. Being a, life, a basic life support instructor, what's the first thing that hit you when you saw that report break that he died, you know, while crossing the, the River Niger and the Delta aspect of it mm. to go on location? One, there was no, there was no uh, rescue because ordinarily, okay, let's say, um, okay, number one, the first thing was that he was not wearing his jacket. Yeah. Um, and number two, there was no form of rescue. There's what we call dry rescue. Dry rescue. Dry rescue, meaning that the, um, a backup boat or somebody who saw because they said that it was a capsize, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody must have identified, or they should have been somebody, a surveillance team. If, if there's uh, movement in water, there must be some form of yeah. you know, surveillance would have just come there. Now, there's what we call the troll line. The troll line is it's, it's a rope that you throw. It has some um, a weight that, it, that floats, a floating weight. Like an anchor? Yes. You throw, not an anchor, okay. it's not sharp. Oh, floating. It's floating, okay, yes. Okay. You throw it towards or in front or behind a drowning um, person. Mm. The person only needs to grab it and you will pull the person to the boat or to the land, according, depending on where uh, it, it happens. Okay. But none of these things were present. Now you heard, I heard the testimony of the captain of the of the boat that he survived because he, he could, could swim. swim so it means the other um guy couldn't swim or the other guys because it's more than i think there were three yeah that um about so three of them couldn't four, swim yeah. so these basic life skills are things that we must begin to consider very 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 important you will find even in abuja here the other day uh, what year was that when there was a flood around Gradima um, yeah. roundabout? And they actually saw there was this man who was even identified. He had to climb out of the vehicle and stood on the vehicle yeah. until there was no troll line in the um, fire truck. That's what you use to recover people who are drowning. Mm -hmm. You throw the line towards them. All they need to do is to grab it. Then you, you are at a vantage position already. You recover them. You just pull, 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 pull and they're back. So these are safety things. Now, what about the, the, the training for if the, the captain of the boat could perform CPR or people around who recovered um, at their, I mean, the late um, Pope, if they could perform CPR, they would mm. have saved him. Now, in drowning, there is a higher chance of survival because in drowning, what happened is water took the place of oxygen or air. So, what you need to do, if I, if for in 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 um, lifeguarding now, if I go to rescue somebody who is drowning in a yeah. pool. And you know, people are very frantic when they are drowning. Anything they hold up to you know, desperation yes, to that desperation. So if point, he yeah. grabs me, and from training, there's a way to free myself. But if I find that each time I free myself and come back, he still grabs me, I will allow him to completely drown. Mm. In life, in lifeguarding, we say we don't want two victims. Allow one person drown, recover that person. If I if I was there when he drowned, I would resuscitate him. Because I know the problem is air. So once we bring him to land, I'll just perform chest compressions and give more breaths because it's about air. And he'll be recovered. And the thing is, is we see fine people... But isn't that also dependent on how long he's been in the water at that no, point I time. witnessed it. Okay. I'm a witness. Now, okay, okay. I went there and he grabbed me. I let him... Oh. Okay. You no, know, they allowed him to be complete, to drown. That means to lose... Air takes over mm. um, 
I mean, water ticks over here. Then he's, he goes to the bottom. I will go recover him, bring him on land, then do CPR. He will be back. Now, I need to do the chest compressions and also use what you call the AED, the autom automated external defibrillator, which is responsible mm -hmm. for bringing back the heart to normal rhythm. So, and the AED can be used by a five-year-old child because it gives you every prompt to take on um, what to do. But what do we find? We don't find this equipment everywhere mm. in our in now where two or three people are gathered, the AED should be present. Organizations, Organizations public, private public, everywhere. Yes. Because you know why? The number one risk factor for a cardiac arrest is that you have a heart. Mm. If we all have hearts, then we're all at risk. And remember, cardiac arrest is sudden. The Ibibios, they have this um, um, saying that a, a war that has a date cannot kill a cripple. Because you start his journey early. Mm. There's a date. If war is starting on the 19th, he knows he's not as fast as other people. He, but you see, emergencies have no dates. It could just happen. So in Chevron, for instance, every five minutes walk, you find an AED. So if there's an event, somebody is in, is in a cardiac arrest, you can have an AED to quickly do mm. some form of um, uh, resuscitation. So we don't take life very seriously. Even at the Federal Secretariat, we do not have an AED anywhere. Uh, you've checked? I, I'm an, I went on audit. I went to Kubwa. Kubwa, there is this um, FEMA, there's a point, the, the, the gate to Kubwa, federal housing gate, okay. where you have the FEMA um, truck. I went there to do an audit of that, what, do, what they have. They had an AED, but my dear came, the battery was not working. So that so means they didn't no have... no emergency response then if they, were, uh, yes. they needed it. And where did they put the AED? It was hidden. They had to look for it, look for it, look for it. Now, in cardiac arrest, time is of essence. That time you're using to look for, no. We don't allow it to be kept in a, in a mm. hidden place. It must be obvious. Now, Christian, in, in churches and mocks, we don't have AEDs. Let me, let me tell you something. I went to Joseph Prince's church in Singapore. From the gate, from as you're entering, the first thing you will behold is a first aid box and an AED in the presence of God. You see, we take things for granted here. In Dubai, you cannot open your hotel without having a first aid box and an AED in the vision, in, 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 in public glare, where people glare can, can instantly see. yeah get to it. Life is important. Once one can you imagine we've lost a great soul, mm. a family has lost a, uh, lost a father a husband, a brother, and a country has lost a citizen mm -hmm. for something that, you know, we take these things for granted. The other day I went to a, a, a mission school to introduce, to ask them to do um, first aid training and all that. Do you yeah. know what I was told? I said, God forbid, those things will not happen here. But you know, we are all at risk. In risk management, you must prepare for risks. Mm. Prepare. If it doesn't happen, good. Risk is like insurance. If you don't have, there's one, I have a very senior friend who was paying for um, comprehensive insurance for four years. The fifth year, he, he, didn't, pay. he didn't pay because it was uh, for four years now. Not, in that fifth year, he had an accident. And when he rushed back to say, let me pay, they said, no, you don't pay when you when need you it. When you need it, yeah. You pay before you need it mm. so these things are like insurances we take to help us so uh, yeah you, you talked about the defibrillator why it's absolutely necessary to be there mm. but there's also one thing to have it and that oh, and you, you did mention that even a child can use it a but it's also a function it. of training yeah yes training down if i open it now it will start talking it will start it will, there's a prompt it will tell you oh okay i will demonstrate when it's time for demonstration mm -hmm. demonstrate it so it means that you need to be trained, yes, to how to place it and you tap the button, yeah. what to do. That is that is part of what we call the first aid, CPR, and AED training. It's a training. 
And why do you do training? It's to bring to your awareness of the things you need to know when um, an, an, an emergency takes mm. place. Um, many months ago, I was coming from Jos, and around Akwanga, there was an accident. And I had my first aid box with me. I packed my car and rushed into the accident scene with my first aid box. I got there, opened it, quickly used my hand glove. That's the first thing. Mm. So we come, we check, is the scene safe? The scene is safe. You get in. First thing is, is uh, personal protection. You protect yourself. I put my glove. I was able to help. But do you know in Nigeria, when there's an accident, what many of the people who come there are useless. What I mean useless, I mean useless. It means they have no use, no function. They want to help, but they do not have the okay. skill. So the only to thing help. they do is to make videos of people in pain, of people who have died, of people who are in there in, or screaming and stuff. But in the Scandinavian, in Norway, for instance, as there's an when there's an accident, all the drivers stopping are coming out with their first aid box and they're able to help. In South Africa, teenagers are the ones doing the rescue, coming to the rescue of people. Training. Nothing is wrong, but we are just a people that have overboarding God to be do everything to us. It's God, 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 God will do, God will do, God will say, oh, come on, there's some, there's some brain in your head. We need you to use it because we are losing so many people because we are not activating ourselves. These things are not... Do you know what CPR is? If there's a power surge in this house now, in this on this building mm. now, there is a, a, a short circuit. Yes, that will trip off. The same way you can have an event, maybe a, a syncope or something got a news and your mm. your heart feels that there's going to be more destruction, it switches off. So it is you know when the storm is over, the lightning is gone, somebody will move to that switch that was switched off and switch it back on mm. so the human being is one required to switch on this person to or to jack this person back to life mm. and you see we as individuals must uh, commit to do this because it is like you're you're a lifesaver do you know what it means the other day in abuja here remember in apo on apo uh, road i was driving and suddenly i saw that there was a gap between the uh, between cars, very wide gap. So I was wondering what was going on here. I looked and I saw this man in, in Nissan Amanda. His face, he had already was backwards, head backwards, tilted backwards. He was driving? He was he was stationary this time. And people behind him were honking. They were honking. So when I saw, I said, no, this man is in a state of, he needs help. I quickly packed my car and rushed to him and started giving the chest compressions. Until he now jacked back, jacked back. And resuscitated him, yeah. You get so now but the nigerians behind you know that's what happens here when you find people not moving instead of finding the problem in first aid we call it finding the problem what do we do we hoot you just keep hooting and hooting and hooting but it's still be useless if you do not even know the cpr you know, and anything to do this same thing in nairobi when i was in nairobi we were, we're going somewhere one day and a vehicle stopped in front of us and our driver stopped where they and what else we going so now, say, why, why is this man We're telling the driver, why you, you let's move this? They now told us, you know what the driver told us? He said, this man obviously has a problem. That's why he has stopped like this. Let's wait and see. Mm. And when we waited a while, we saw a policeman walk towards him. He was asking a question. He asked and he continued. I said, what? No hooting. It's just for him to stop at this point. He has a problem. No, apparently I realized there was more of a Nigerian thing. This constant honking of yes. our horn. Yes. I realized that other Africans talk about all this. Ah, if you go to Nigeria, they like to honk yes. the yes. lot. I didn't know the it was not a global thing. Music like a pig. I did not know. Keyboard, you know. <laughs> so we need to come to this point of, um, it's like being your brother's keeper. Yeah. For instance, now I'm in the studio. I'm talking. If I have knowledge of CPR. If you don't have, I'm at risk. Mm. If as I'm talking, I have a cardiac arrest, and you cannot help me. Mm. So people should not just train themselves or train a few people in the organizations. Train everyone because the person you train as the, the first responder, that day may be sick or he went to mm. buy food. Something could happen. And that will become a very serious matter. In schools, what do we do? Parents don't even ask questions. You just take your children to school. and. Sometimes you come back and they tell you stories. Now, the, the cardiac arrest in children is called cortis motis. Their own is from play. You know this play children play and they're hitting their yeah, chest yeah. themselves. That's how it happens. And the only thing that can resolve it 
is an AED. So, but with schools, we pay so much money to schools. These facilities are not there. They don't even care. Things happen, and we we'll just blame it on, okay, or give it as a time, God's time. Mm. There are many people who are dying when God Avoidable not, deaths. Avoidable deaths. All right. How do people just die like that? You know, I was in Singapore, and they told me that people don't just die. I was surprised. They said, no, you don't just die. Human beings die. They be, when they talk about it, you start wondering. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go on a quick break. And when we return, uh, we'll talk some more. Stay with us, please. It's totally different. Hello, my name is Kimberly Nwachiku. I'm the host of Hard Facts. And I bring you the biggest stories driving conversation every weekday here on 95.1 Nigeria Info Hard Facts Show. I love to get your opinion and conjectures, but the facts you cannot dispute here on Hard Facts. Join me and let's talk. This 
is Nigeria Info This is Nigeria Info. Nigeria Info. This is Nigeria Info. As we talk about uh, uh, the basic first aid, CP, uh, CP, uh, CPR, uh, yeah. <laughs> and the use of the defibrillator in the wake of the death of the Nollywood actor who died from drowning. And is it possible that if it, they had trained people around, mm. they could have saved his life? Uh, the first few minutes of bringing him out of the water. It's yeah. one thing not to be able to rescue him while he's drying, like you mentioned. You're yeah. an expert. You swim pretty well. You have your academy. However, you know that, uh, like you painted the picture, people are struggling yeah. when they're drowning. So there's a tendency to pull one down. Yeah. So even if you let the person go down, you can bring the person back, back up. up. And that's when you apply and all of yes, the, the, skills, the first yes. aid uh, skills and uh, what is required. Yeah. So apparently a lot of people there do not know. Yeah. So when we're talking about some of these skills, aside from you knowing how to do this, you know how to swim also. Yeah. But people who also know how to swim, there's a tendency, it depends on the current or the undercurrent, can also drown. Yes. So there's, there's, um, there's a pool swimming and there's an um, ocean, ocean swimming. Ocean, river, river swimming yeah. With currents and stuff. But there's a general principle. Okay. There's a general principle for survival. You don't confront the waves if you're in the... If you are at sea mm. or in an ocean, you don't confront you. You 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 bow to the waves. You I don't bow. Understand. I mean, bow. You go now, with the flow. You go with the flow. Now, if the wave is in your direction, good for you. Okay. But many times, people try to confront the waves in at sea, when they are at sea, and confronting the waves is the waves is is carrying some um, hydro. Mm. I mean, energy. There's energy. There's hydro energy that is coming with it will knock you and once it knocks you it takes you under it so what you do is if you're confronting the wave and it's approaching you you bow what i mean bow is you go under you dive under and allow it to pass then you continue mm. now but if you can things happen that's why in swimming we have a rule never swim alone never swim alone means that don't swim when nobody's watching it may be a five-year-old child, somebody who can who can cry for help. Somebody who can just say, hey, my uncle is not, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Just something for help. Now, you may be swimming, may be a very good swimmer. You may have exhaustion. You may go into a cardiac arrest, depending if the person, something sudden can just happen. Yeah. You are at the middle of the, the swimming pool, a 50-meter swimming pool, and suddenly you are exhausted, you can't move again. Now you come to the rescue, and that's where the lifeguard also, let me say this here. Unfortunately, we don't have many lifeguards in Nigeria. All these, uh, when you go to hotels, all those fellows you see there, I'm sorry to, to shock you. They don't have the training. They don't training. have the training. You will be shocked if something happens. You don't want to try it. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why we're calling out, when you go to places, ask questions. Are you trained in this? And if you are not sure, ask for their certification. Can I see? Abroad, people ask these questions to the latter. They even ask you, put it on the wall, let's even see. But here, um, the average Nigerian... I know in most public asking, polls, yes, you see that there. they will have this, this, this person yeah. trained for this. The average Nigerian, who, if you ask them if they know how to do something, they'll tell you yes. Like if you ask you, can you do CPI? There's so much, you say yes, yes, yes. But what's going on? Mm -hmm. So what you are meant to do when there is... Um, in that kind of event is somebody's now you you do what you call dry rescue like i spoke about yeah. you throw the line to that person the line is a very long up to 50 meters you throw it the person will only grab it once you are on land you are recovering the person the person will just the head will, because it's critical for us for your head to be above the water you just pull the person very fast out of the water now if the person is not able to uh, if the person has gone down mm. And that is a late rescue. You have to do what's called wet rescue. Wet rescue is you have to straddle, walk into the pool and swim towards the person with your head up. When you get to the person's location, to the, uh, you, 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 you dive in, mm. recover the person in and put the person's head on your chest. Then you swim backwards to land. So now what I've just said cannot be done by somebody who is not fit. So fitness is important. Now, 
those of you who swim or you know um, uh, swimming pools around, when you go, the next time you go to those hotels, go and ask those people how many of them can swim for one hour nonstop. In the training for lifeguards that I did in South Africa, if you cannot swim for one hour nonstop, you cannot enter the training. Number two, if you cannot swim 100 meters within two minutes, 100 meters, I mean Olympic size, mm -hmm. you swim to and fro. That's 50, 50. In two, if you arrive 201, you are out of that training. Number three, if you cannot because tread water, yes, yes if you cannot tread water for two minutes, mm -hmm. you are out. Four, if you cannot swim 25 meters underwater, you are out. Before you even enter, the, you, you, you want to become, hmm? before you, they start training you for lifeguarding, you must fulfill these four conditions. So, what are we doing here? Water is a friend, but if you fight water, water, once you begin to fight it, it will bring you to the bottom. But if you don't fight water, if I throw you into the water and you don't fight, water will bring you back to the surface. But it's fighting. When you begin that fight, that's water struggle. will say, yeah, that's struggle. Water will say, no, who's fighting us? We don't like fighters. Come stay under here. Mm. And it doesn't matter the amount of drink you pour into it. Because I saw no. Nigerians putting up video shortly after that. If you pour this one, you appease this one. Well, those are things no, that are just all those plenty of stuff. Yeah. Just learn. Learn to swim. Once you learn to swim, we say it is in water you must be all you must mm. always be intentional. You must kick, you must pull, you must stay above, your head must be above water. Mm. So learn to swim. If you can't swim and you're traveling by water, the safety yes, gadget is that required. Is the weight. And once you wait kept... to, once you fall in, if there's an emergency, relax. Now, if you... If you have your safety jacket. Yes. Yeah. If you have it, you can still drown. Really? Yes. Uh -uh. Is it not supposed to keep you floating Good. and then keep your, Good. Like, that's your when, head up? That's when you do nothing. Okay. You are supposed to do nothing. Now, I have all the safety stuff I use for my training. So mm. I find that you give people this, you tell them, and they get there. They panic. They panic, and they find themselves, they are the ones increasing. See what happens. Once you bump up and down, you, you are pushing, you are using force to push yourself. That thing is supposed to keep you up. It's a buoyant object. But you begin to, and by doing that, you are taking in water. You know, you're already, yeah. you're already, you're, you're in a panic state. So you are taking in water, and it's about water. If water continuously go in, uh, goes into your, mm. your trachea, into your lungs, you can drown even in your sleep at home. Drowning means water took the place of air. So you can drown, you can be drowned by saliva with a liquid. You find that children, some children, they choke on, they yeah. choke and they die. So we, we declare that. So mm. once you wear that, have you not watched uh, some videos that people who go for uh, event picnics or stuff and they put some stuff in the water and they give them, and they, there was one man I watched, he fell into the water with his life jacket, but he was still struggling. And the lifeguard was only telling him, sir, do nothing. Yeah. But you know, sometimes it's difficult to not do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Because to you, you say, you don't believe what this man is saying. This thing, you mean this small, you know, mm. sometimes people tell you, you mean this small jacket yes, will hold me? Yeah. They don't believe in the jacket. But let me tell you here, just believe in it. All right. Just believe in it. Let's look at some comments uh, quickly. Paul from Curry, she says, uh, I want to thank God for the small knowledge of CPR I know in basic biology. I would have lost my only son on the 6th of June, 2022. The boy was choking when the mother force fed him. I cited, I sighed deeply for gratitude when he jerked back to life because of CPR. Yes. It was force feeding him and mm. I'm sure the food messed up. Yes, it went yeah. the other way, yeah. We are just the people that have over God. Unfortunately, this is who we are. Rebook from Guarimpa. Awakening is for real, he went on to say. All right, then let, let's take a call. Uh, Pharmacist Isaac is going to demonstrate the use of the CPR and we are recording it. We're going to upload it on YouTube and Facebook so that you can go at least get the basics on how that is done. But first, let's hear from you. Hello. Hello. Yes, welcome. Yeah, hello, Tim. Good afternoon. And uh, good afternoon, uh, yes. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, uh, honestly speaking, I'm very, very happy with this guest. He has really, really spoken well. And everything, everything he said is just correct. That is just correct, completely correct. Then, I also want to quickly add to this. You know, this 
even of the thing, it's not just only about um, learning how to swim. One also needs to be very, very fit, just like you rightly said. Very, very fit, very, very energetic, and constant exercise, just like from time to time you do your workout, because swimming requires energy. You understand? It's not like, okay, everybody, everybody can jump into a boat, you only can, you can jump into a car and drive and all that. And swimming is one thing that if you learn it in life, you will, even if you stay in the next 50 years, you don't go to school, you will never forget. If they throw you inside the middle of the river while you are sleeping, once your body touches that water, you get afloat. It's because it's like, it's the like say that follow come once you learn how to swim because that skill never dies. All right. The only thing you need to do is always have, always exercise so that you don't just get, you know, quickly and, uh, and you know, um, how do I even put it? You just get tired at the middle of the river, and and that would be all. You sound like you're a good swimmer, like you swim a lot. I come from River Rhine area, and I school in Lokoja. I swim in Banaja. Anybody call any student from Lokoja, they will tell you. They swim from Pata, <laughs> they go to the middle and center of the river and come out. All right, all right. Oh, really? Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Let's hear another caller another quickly. Caller. Hello. 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 Welcome. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Welcome. Yeah. Could you ask uh, this, there? Yeah. With the end of swimming jacket, can one, who knows how to swim, can he only be swimming out while having the jacket or he just look us as a real jacket and he can swim very well? Or he can swim at least one ten percent. All right, we'll respond. I didn't get that. He's asking that if you can swim and you have like a, jacket. a life jacket on mm. you, can you still swim with it or it just keeps you floating? Yeah, you can swim with it. You can swim with it. But that's an added advantage. Okay. But me, I wear my life jacket when I go. The other day I was at the Marina Resort in Calabar. And I was going to Creek Town and we had to use. Mm. I wore it. If anything happens, hmm, I will not even swim. I will relax there until they come and carry me. I understand how it works. Swimming is that I'm going to exhaust But can it be a fake one? Like they give you one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear that I relax and drown. I want to know, is there a fake like this? <laughs> yes, I need to chew for my <laughs> There's no, there's no fake like jacket. <laughs> oh my God. Just relax. Mm. The thing that once you are relaxed, it will whole keep you up there. Now, what is that stuff made of? It's made of um, um, materials that are lighter than water. Uh, so, water will keep you up. Will keep you principle up because of, of flotation. That. Yes, flotation. That's mm. just it. So, it's for us to understand. You know, when you understand this on land, mm. when it happens in water, you will not. But if you don't understand it now, once it happens in water, you can't do anything. So, that's why this... Water safety and awareness must keep going on. Many Nigerians are dying, even abroad from, yeah. you know. There was one that happened at the resort. Three, a man, no, um, a man, a man and his three children drowned. Yeah. They were drowning. He, could, he couldn't swim. He, he hopped in thinking it's not, it's uh, one of these uh, jokes. Mm -hmm. You know, like there was a case of a, a guy who saw a beautiful lady like you swimming and he wanted to go and toast the lady that had a deep end and he jumped in. Ah. You just saw a random woman swimming yeah, in the middle like, of nowhere. Like, you know, some men now. It's As okay. he arrived there, <laughs> he had to be rescued. <laughs> 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 so, once you don't have knowledge, you don't have knowledge mm. of something, learn it. Mm. Anything you are afraid of, Learn. If you learn it, the fear yes, is fear. And yeah. then something you said that is very instructive also, that even for people who know how to swim, I mean, we've had cases even in Nigeria where you hear somebody went to rescue people, he mm. rescued four or five people, mm. then drowned eventually. Yes. I mean, it comes to the point where you are just so desperate to bring everybody yes. out, then somebody is drowning yourself. and pulling you, then you're yes. like, no, I must try, I must mm. try. I mean, you said something yes. very instructive. If you see that that person is thrashing so hard, just let the let person go more. down. Yes, then you recover. And recover. And resuscitate. Resuscitate. Mm. Uh, it, you know, the phone lines have started buzzing seriously. I feel like we need to take the, the CPR. Benga is okay. already stationed okay. with his All camera. Right, so. <laughs> At least let's do that. Then we come back to the phone lines and ask a few more questions. Okay, so um, if, if I'm walking, 
Okay. And I just find somebody on the ground. Well, coming in here, I just found somebody on the ground. I'll first of all check, ask, is the scene safe? Is the scene safe? Is yeah. Scene safe? I'll, 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 I'll respond. The scene is safe. Mm. Then I'll come and check. I'll check the pulse. I use what you call the carotid. Uh, you can call okay, maybe you speak with that mic okay. there. Yeah. Now checking the pulse. I'll check. Oh, two things. Is, there's no pulse. It's not breathing. Mm. I'll tell you who is close to me. I'll say, go get the first aid box and the AED. So you go and get that stuff. So you need help. Okay, first before I even ask you, I'll say, help, help. Yeah. Now if I find help in somebody like you, go get the first aid box and the AED. Before you come, I'll be doing what you call chest compressions. Now, how do you do the chest compressions? You have the two nipple, the two nipples of the human being. Mm -hmm. In between the two nipples is what at the position, the lower um, breastbone, the sternum here, that okay. you put one heel of your right hand, okay. and you put the other heel on the other, and you do compressions. The compressions are coming from your shoulder. Mm -hmm. So you do 30 compressions and you give three breaths. And you, it has to be, Fast, it has to be hard and fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. Then you, you pinch the nose, tilt the, the head nose, backward, tilt the head and backward. wrap your mouth around the mouth of the victim and you do, do two breaths. You go one. Two, you continue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 Okay. It, it just tells you what to do. Can you just raise the AED so that the camera can capture? Okay. okay. So That's it. Yes. All right. The case begins by oh. removing all clothing from the patient's chest. Mm. Cut clothing if needed. Did you hear that? Yes. Remove Cut all clothing. clothing. If, needed. if the person is, is wearing some clothes, you use, there's a scissors here. In the AED, the AED has when a scissors. When the patient's chest is bare, remove protective cover and take out White adhesive pad. That's what he's telling me now. There's a pad here. Yeah. See the pad. Look carefully at the pictures on the white adhesive pads. Peel one pad from the yellow plastic liner. Okay. He's giving me instructions. Instructions. So yeah. I'm supposed to peel it now, and but there's no. Look carefully at the pictures on the white adhesive pads. Peel one pad from the yellow plastic liner. So that instruction is giving me. I've not carried it out. Yeah. I don't need. It. There's no case right now. Look carefully at the picture. Is this telling me? He said, why are you wasting pads? time? So he's <laughs> repeating and repeating. So by the time it, you, it, it, it tells you to, by the time you place it, yeah. it will not tell you shock advice. It means you need to shock this person. The person is in uh, uh, fibrillation. Yeah. So it will not say charging. It will not be charging. Then once you press, it will deliver mm. the shock. So if you have this, you don't need to even do the CPR? No, you need. You, you need, need to do the CPR hand first. Yes. The hand compression yes. before this one. Yes, before okay. this one. The hand compression is very important to keep the heart and the brain with oxygen and air. Mm. Very important. Now, once the heart is in fibrillation, the only thing that can defibrillate is the automated external defibrillator. Okay. In the hospitals in the past, you had this manual one that they put. Yes, all like. The big, all those. Yeah. Stuff. But now you have the auto automated one that reads the heart reading and is able to ask you to deliver um, mm. uh, a, a shock when needed. Is there a particular reason why the count has to be two? I noticed when you were doing the mouth to mouth, yes, it's there's two. one, now, two. Yes, you do two because the time between um, compressions and breath must be limited to six seconds. Okay. It's very critical because you are giving air to mix with the blood you are sending from the heart, pumping to like mm. that. You are mixing it so that the brain will be alive until the heart picks up. So you don't stop giving compressions and giving breath until you have what you call ROSC, which R -O -S -C. is return of spontaneous circulation. Return of spontaneous so circulation. So once there's return of spontaneous circulation, you, the AED will tell you shock not needed. Shock not needed. That means the heart has is back. back okay. So what do you do? Imagine you can now move the patient to a hospital.
Mm. Now, until then, you can, it's not allowed for you to move the, the, the cardiac uh, arrest victim from where it happened. Because time is of essence. Yeah. We call it load and go. We don't want you to load and go. No loading and going. Mm. It happened in Kubwa the other day. A, a Brigadier General had cardiac arrest in the presence. Yeah. Brigadier General had cardiac arrest in the presence of his um, soldiers. They were not trained. So what did they do? They loaded him in their in his vehicle and drove him to the national hospital. But once he got in, he was dead on arrival. Now you can see they are securing him. But internally, something happened. Something, Safety. Yeah. And they could not. Yeah. So soldiers, too, they need to be trained in first aid, CPR, and AED use. In the U.S., they have all this training. The vehicles, police vans in the U.S. carry AEDs mm. around. Uh, fire trucks carry, carry them, them around. around yeah. Anywhere there can be an emergency. These are the first responders that will carry this stuff. What are we doing? AEDC, I've gone there to talk to them. Um, when there's an electric shock, these guys, these uh, people that work on poles and there's a yeah. the shock and yeah. fall, they are not meant to die like that. If there's a shock, what has happened is the heart, if now this this um, equipment, if I place it on myself now and I shock, I'll go into a cardiac arrest. But you put it back and shock me back. And it will bring you back. Bring me back. Ah, uh, interesting. That's why it's absolutely needed. So like it's you said. very, very important. So if we take this very seriously, we'll be able to save a lot of lives. Mm. If not, we will just be, you know, in the prayer mood, thinking that God will come and do CPR for us. All right. All right, let, let's hear one or two more calls. Our time is almost up. We need to wrap up now. Yes, for those who are asking, it will be uploaded. Being guys working on it. Vital is from Lue. Put the video up on WhatsApp. No, but it will be on our YouTube and it will be on our Facebook page. You can go watch it there. Eunice from Wuse to says, Kim, Kim, fear not. <laughs> when I was asking about the fake light jacket. <laughs> when you said you just relax, I say, ah, uh -uh, I know you're a fake light jacket. I relax and he still went. Uh, hello, Kim, please tell the pharmacist to finish the Singapore gist. He was, <laughs> the, the pharmacist had plenty gist though. <laughs> Let's take this call quickly. Hello? Hello, You're welcome. Yeah, it's uh, my number of calling from Asokoro. Go ahead. Uh, I think this, uh, I'm a swimmer. I think I, I swam as a lifeguard, as a professional swimmer, and uh, I understand what the, uh, the speaker is talking about. Uh, but what's important is that one of the things, one of the alarming facts that we need to realize is that most Nigerians, in the military, in the police, in the many, many sectors, people don't know this, and it's very, and they don't know this CPR, uh, uh, this uh, this kind of process. It's very important. I, I, I don't know why our government uh, uh, and many establishments are, are taking it easy. Many people don't know how to do this. So this awareness is something that uh, not just uh, but organizations, even uh, there your radio station, people should know how they should have to take. You're right. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Yes, it will be uploaded. Thank you very much. Glad to hear pharmacist Isaac's voice again. I read online today that the actor was down in the water for two hours, but it was also reported that he was still alive when he was brought out. So what went wrong, Ruth? D? There were just there's just so many stories mm. at this point so in time. Stories, the thing know. is, he's mm. gone sadly. He's gone. That's and, it. And uh, nothing there. Uh, so I, I think we should take uh, when things happen like this. Um, let's be more proactive. Mm. Now, if we are talking about it, I'm, I'm being invited in many places to talk about this now. But are we just talking and just allowing it to go? Are we going to take action to say, government begin to, to say, okay, every organization should present a certificate of uh, first training in first aid, CPR, and AED, and we'll, begin, we'll make it a curriculum in our schools for children to begin to learn it early. Yeah. Families, you can do your own family uh, a, a first aid training and all that. You don't have to go to, you can invite the, 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 the trainers to your house to train. These things are very important. A five-year-old girl, saved her mother in the u.s they were trained in school she, she was talking to her mom the mom was not responding the mom is not responding now she ah you know she's she has this very little palms and stuff she can't be able to push her you know what she did she stood on her mom's chest and was jumping she was jumping on the chest 
Now we see in TPR that it is better you perform something than not to do anything. She was jumping on the chest day, and the mother was uh, uh, was was resuscitated. So, if five year olds can learn this thing, if I ask the average Nigerian five year old, what do you do if you have fire burning behind and on your back? Mm. They will say you keep running. It's not a keep running matter. There is a principle for it. When fire is burning, you do you do stop, drop, and roll. You remove oxygen from the the the. the yeah. All right, Let, let's go on a quick break. We'll be back to wrap this up with Farm Isaac Onoja. Stay with us. Talk Nigeria Info. This is Nigeria Info. Nigeria Info.